Hello everyone. Today we're going to do um, circular motion, a kind of an introduction to this. Um, for this one, we're going to do a pretty simple uh, problem, which is this. Um, if we're going over a hill in our car, and let's assume for, for the sake of simplicity that it's actually a round hill, a right, perfectly round hill, and we're going to reach 60 miles per hour at the top. All right, and there's our car. I own a little minivan. Look kind of like an SUV there. Okay, the question is, as I'm going along that car, um, if I reach 60 miles an hour at the top, how curved can this be? What can the radius of this guy be uh, before I go flying off and, and, and don't actually and lose contact with the road? Um, first of all, let's just get this into real units. We'll just call that approximately 30 meters per second. Okay. Um, and let's start uh, solving it. Um, first thing we want to do is draw some as draw a free body diagram. Uh, I want to make very clear in this chapter on circular motion, there are no new forces. Um, we've only included a special case where acceleration uh, is in a circular motion. So there are no new forces. I want to make this very clear. I don't know if I can make this clearly enough. There's no such thing as centripetal force, centrifugal force, and whatever force. It doesn't exist, okay? There are only the forces we've talked about, basically friction, um, uh, uh, gravity, um, normal force, uh, maybe drag, because we've talked a little bit about stuff like that. Um, and that's that's basically it, okay? So, so um, there are no new forces. Um, but it will uh, change the way we actually do some of these problems. So let me show you how. First, let's do a free body diagram of this guy at the top here. Um, of course, uh, he has one force on it that's obvious, the force of gravity. The force of gravity always exists because we're on the Earth, and um, his wheels are pressing on something. What are his wheels pressing on? Uh, they're pressing on the ground and the ground is pressing up on the wheels so that gives you a normal force. We're going to assume that uh, basically it's pretty much a constant uh, velocity at um, at the top here and so there's no like acceleration happening due to friction or anything like this. Okay. So um, those are the only forces that are actually on this car. Uh, there's normal force and gravity. Uh, so let's uh, we can actually do this. This is very similar to our old problems. We just write F net in the y direction again as per usual, calling this x this y. The F net in the y direction is just the normal force minus the force of gravity. Pretty straightforward. This looks like stuff we've done a lot of times before. Um, and that's equal to mass times the acceleration in the y direction. Again, pretty straightforward. Nothing too, uh, too incredibly different. Um, Let's ask for a second, what does it actually mean to lose contact with the road or to, to go to flying in the air? Well, if you think about it, as we kind of go over this hill faster and faster and faster, um, each time the wheels feel a little bit less force, basically the car is coming up more and more and more. And then eventually the car is actually going to lift off the ground. When the car lift off, lifts off the ground, those wheels are no longer experiencing a normal force. Uh, basically, they're not in contact with the road anymore. And so the actual point at which things no longer experience normal force is actually when things start to come off the ground, basically when you lose control of the car. Um, that's what you never want to have happen. You never actually want this to go to zero. Of course, we're asking for that exact moment. And so what we're interested in is when Fn is equal to zero. Um, so no contact with the road. Okay. So... This gets even easier. We get that minus Fg is equal to mass times the acceleration in the y direction. That's a really easy equation. Um, the cool thing is, is that we're almost done here. All we need to know now is how acceleration, uh, radio acceleration work or circular acceleration works. Um, in this case, the car, as it's going over this circular thing, is always being accelerated towards the center. It's constantly being accelerated towards the radius. That is what circular motion is all about. And that acceleration that it experiences, in this case in the y direction, is just equal to v squared over r, where r is the radius uh, of the circle that it's traveling in, and v is how fast it's going. 
Well, this looks pretty simple at this point, and it is. Um, we know that, um, uh, and and we know that minus FG is just equal to minus mg. We're going to go ahead and put a minus sign since we now know that the acceleration is actually down. So we're going to call this minus m times v squared over r. Okay, and uh, we can do what we normally can do, which is cross out the m's, we'll make those negatives positives. And to find the radius, we'll just move the r over there and the g over here and just get r is equal to v squared over g. v squared is just 30 squared. 30 squared is just 900 meters squared per second squared. g, I'm going to use my old trick of saying that's around 10 meters per second squared. Look, our per second squares cancel out our meter, one of our meters cancels out here. And we just get that this is equal to 90 meters. So as long as we have a radius that's that's uh, 90 meters or greater, it has to be greater because um, for this to get bigger, it, to, to, for, for the acceleration to be less, the radius has to be bigger. Um, so if it has a radius of 90 meters or bigger, uh, then we're going to be fine. So check that out. The next time you're driving along the road at 60 miles per hour, make sure you don't go over any hills that have a radius less than 90 meters or else you'll be in the air. Um, I hope that was useful, and uh, I will see you later.